Property division can be one of the most difficult parts of a divorce. What to do with the house? What to do with the retirement accounts? What to do with the second home? What to do about the boat? What to do about the cars? So many questions and it's daunting. I've asked Amy Salomon, our firm's client services specialist, to join me and ask the top five questions our clients have as they begin to think through property division for their divorce. So now let's welcome Amy and those five questions. Our first property division question, question one, is what do we do about the house we have together, Van? Well, this is where if we can get involved early, we can make the most difference. So, for instance, if we know that the house is really important to you and your spouse could care less about it, then we can craft our offer, our settlement, before positions get too fixed and people get too intransigent with their, with their positions we can go in and try to craft a flexible plan to meet the goal of you staying in the house. Now, if you come to me and say, Van, I want to get out of this house, I'm underwater, we're in debt, I, I, want, I want to just be free of it. We can also craft a plan for that. But it's important before we get too fixed in our positions for you to come meet with me and have a conversation about your goals for the house. Maybe your goal is, Van, I want to sell this house, but I need a little more time, we want to wait the market out more than the typical 90 days, maybe a year, or two years, then sell it. Is that possible? And again, the answer is maybe if we can get there early before the, your spouse gets a position in their head that they won't move from. And I see that all the time. Let's try to do this ourselves. We get fixed in our positions and then we can't get movement. And then parties are forced to go to court to get resolution. So let's meet early. Let's get your goals. Let's get the lay of the land and let's craft a solution to allow you to keep the house, mm -hmm. sell the house, or get rid of the house, or give it to him as quickly as we can. Whatever it is, we can do it if we start early. Property division question two. Okay. Can I get him to sign an agreement to give me his interest in the house? We can. These, these agreements are called quit claim deeds. Other times we deed it as a deed of gift. Uh, different tax consequences different reasons for choosing one of those two deeds, mm -hmm. but usually one of those two vehicles are how we get the interest from your spouse to you solely. Now more important than what deed we use is how we get agreement on that. And that's usually a combination of not only thinking about the house, but thinking about the other property issues, the retirement, spousal support, child support, how we're gonna divide those. And if we think holistically early, we can get there. Property division question three, what do we do about our retirement assets? Retirement assets are complicated. We usually have three or four because we've changed jobs and they're all over the place. Usually we've started a retirement account before we got married and then there's a hybrid property asset there. So bring your statements. If you have the statements of your spouse's retirement accounts, bring those. We'll lay them on our conference room table and we'll develop a plan of action that makes the most sense. Maybe it's you keep yours, the, your, your spouse keeps theirs. Maybe it's a combination. Maybe it's you keep some, he keeps some, but then the big retirement account, the one where you've been in the job the longest, that one's divided in some way. The percentage of which very much depends on the status of your other assets, if there's any equity in the home, if you have other brokerage accounts, what you brought into the marriage, what is separate property. So there are lots of little questions but the key to begin that conversation is when you meet with your attorney for the first time, bring those statements, we'll analyze them and start to craft a solution that makes sense for your goals. Property division question four, can we make trades? For example, can I get the home if he gets the retirement account? Yes, a lot of people come to me and they say, Van, I just want to keep this simple. I don't want to be on the hook having to deal with this person for the next five, 10, 20 years or in my retirement. I want to be free now. And there are ways to do that. There are ways to craft a plan to simply separate and move on and not have these entangling alliances that mean we have to deal with one another for the rest of our lives. And so, again, if we can start early in that process and craft an offer and a settlement early, I think we can do it. I think we can keep trades simple and we can keep them straightforward, but also assure after the divorce you're financially secure and able to make it. Because if we get you the freedom you're after, but you don't have the financial means to live in that freedom, it's no good to you. So we've got to make sure you're financially secure in that divorce. So let's get started early on that one. 
Property division question five. If I move out and he stops paying the mortgage, what do we do then? Well, that's tough, isn't it? Because maybe he, he was part of how you were able to afford that home. And he's thrown his keys down on the counter, or she's thrown her keys on the counter, left the property, and you're on the hook for maybe a mortgage that's beyond your means alone. Speak to an attorney early. The earlier we get involved in the process to deal with the mortgage, the better, the more solutions we have. The further they get away from paying the mortgage, as likely as not, it's harder to reel them back in to think about the mortgage. Okay? You're both jointly and severally liable for that mortgage if you're on the mortgage together. So you remain responsible even if your spouse walks away. But he or she remains responsible too. So my recommendation is let's look at your overall financial picture. Let's keep you stable, your financial situation stable. Let's think about the mortgage in total with the other assets. And we'll craft an offer for settlement or a solution to get you out of that mortgage quickly. Now, Van, we have a bonus question. Ooh, bonus, okay. What do we do about the dog? Well, our dogs are our children now, aren't they? I mean, they're part of the family. And so it's emotional because giving up a dog and giving them to the spouse can be hard for people. And so we can think about that. Perhaps sometimes there's a monetary equivalent. That means maybe there's an amount of money they'll take to give you the dog. Or maybe there's an amount of money you'll take to give up your interest in the dog. Or maybe there's a visitation plan we'll have to craft so you all will move forward with the dog together. Uh, I've done all of those. I've seen them all. But what I will say is dogs are part of the deal now. They're not just left at the house and people walk away without emotion. They're as emotional as children are, frankly, I'm seeing in many of my settlement conferences.